continue with our study of topology and how it relates to vector calculus and also allowing ourselves to use differential form terminology. So up to number three here on the left, m4 is the plane minus the origin. Okay, so we're going to delete the origin, and so that's not going to be allowed in our space. So for an example of why you want to do that, for example, is maybe you have a vector field that blows up there and you want everything to be continuous and differentiable everywhere on the space, so you just declare the origin to not be in the space. We'll see, we'll see an example of that in just a second. So, first of all, is M4 connected? Yeah, it sure is. Uh, two, two opposite points can't be connected by a straight line, but it's certainly connected by a curve. And so, our argument about vanishing gradient functions still says that the set of uh, F, such that d delta uh, gradient of F equals zero, that's just there's just, they're constant, and so they're just bijective, in other words, one-to-one -one correspondence with R. Or, of course, in differential form language, we just replace that with DF. Okay. But it's not simply connected. So this is the best example, this is the simplest example of something where here's a closed curve, the unit circle, for example, and I cannot fill that in as the boundary of something, because if I tried to fill it in, I'd have to go outside of my space. You might say, well, what if I just fill it in, but it don't include the origin? Well, we're not allowed to have, th there'd be some sort of fuzz here at the origin. We're not allowed to have regions that have that kind of fuzz. It has to have an either, it has to be closed in or it has to have a boundary, and that's not legal. So, or you could, of course, put a tiny little circle there, but then the boundary would be the outer circle and the inner circle, and that is a useful thing to do, but it doesn't mean that just the outer circle is the boundary of the region. So. Um, that's what I mean by we've already observed that M4 is not simply connected. This is something that we had done in our class before. Okay, So 2C was the idea that any simply connected uh, or any uh, scalar curl free vector field or equivalently in terms of one forms, a closed one form, our argument that that must be D of a function, oh we could use this F, that's likely to fail, because Green's theorem can't be applied here because uh, I can't build a region. It's not because Green's theorem is false, it's because it needs a region whose boundary is the only that curve, and it's not going to fail. So here's the really cool thing, though. We can still characterize very explicitly what a scalar curl-free vector field is. Okay, so we go to the standard example of a an interesting vector field that is irrotational, scalar curl free. So the vortex vector field, I'm going to put in a 1 over 2 pi here for my own devious reasons. Here it is in vector calculus language. And of course, we just tilde that to make a one form, almost the same formula, just minus y dx plus x dy all over x squared plus y squared. And the observation that we make, this is a calculation we had done before in our class, is that the integral around the unit circle, see if that fits, okay, of v dot dr, or in other words, the integral over that unit circle of alpha, which is certainly easier to write, well, when you integrate this over the unit circle, you discover that that's exactly 2 pi and then the 1 over 2 pi cancels it. And in fact, uh, any circle around the origin, let's call it C sub A, whose radius is equal to A, that still gives you the same answer. It always gives you the answer of 1. It's a good thing to calculate, either vector calculus or differential forms. So I'm not going to do it explicitly. Um, and that's suspicious that it's independent of the, the, uh, the radius. Well, in fact, any closed curve wrapping once around the origin, even if it kind of does some weird stuff like this, I claim that curve C, you still have integral equal to 1. And why is that? Well, the key calculation is that d alpha is equal to 0. This is a closed one form, or equivalently, the scalar curl that dq dx minus dpdy of the vector field v is equal to zero. If you like vector calculus notation better. Okay. 
Well, that's a pretty straightforward calculation. I'm not actually going to do that calculation. We've done a lot of decalculations, and um, you've probably seen something like this, I hope, at least in the vector calculus version. And this allows us to use Stokes' theorem, okay? And how am I going to use that? I'm going to realize that if I just know, if I do this explicit calculation, that the integral over any curve of radius a is equal to 1, which is, again, this explicit calculation you can do, then I'm going to take any closed curve C, and I'm going to try, I'm sort of going to emulate what I would have liked to do if the origin were there by filling it in, but I'm just going to put a little fence around the origin. I'm going to use take some radius A, as small as I want, as long as it just is inside C, and I'm going to use that to isolate the origin. So that says, and then this is going to be my region R, so it says that the integral over the region R of d alpha, well, that's certainly 0. That's the integral over the boundary of R of alpha. That's Stokes' theorem. But what's the boundary of R? It's integral of over C with the usual orientation minus the integral over the circle of radius alpha of A, circle of radius A of alpha. OK, so these guys are equal. And of course, this was known to be 1. And so the integral over any closed curve encircling the origin just once is equal to 1. OK. So that's very interesting. Well, how does it solve our problem, our original problem? I claimed, I was going to claim, that given any closed one form, or equivalently any scal scalar curl free vector field, that I can describe it very explicitly. OK. Well, here's how we do that. Let's go on. Let's scroll down over here. So we're going to take an arbitrary scalar curl free vector field. Okay. So let f such that scalar curl scalar scalar curl f equals 0 or equivalently f tilde equals 0. Now if that's not um, it had nothing to do with the Faraday two forms. It's just a one form. Okay. And I just want to be able to do this in par parallel notations. Um, this is not going to be a conservative vector field because, for example, the vortex vector field, V can't be the gradient of a function since its circulation around a closed curve is not equal to zero. That's a basic thing. Circulation non-zero means it can't be conservative. But what if we subtract off a multiple of V? Now that we've got V in hand as our standard example of what can go wrong, the claim is nothing else can go wrong. OK, so here, the, here we go. The claim is that um, F, well, let's see. If we let A be the integral, I haven't usually been using this little circle here, but that's to emphasize it's a closed curve, dot dr. We're going to take a random scalar curl free vector field. So this is some weirdo kind of vector field. Maybe kind of looks like the vortex. And we discover that its circulation around the unit circle, let's call it C1, is not equal to 0. And so it certainly couldn't be conservative in itself. What we do is we take that magic number that told us that f was bad in some way and create we're going to create f minus that multiple of the vortex. The claim is that's going to be a conservative vector field. Okay. And here's how we're going to test that. We're going to take the integral over any closed curve of f minus a times the vortex dot dr. Or in other words, in differential form language, the form version of that minus a times, I guess was calling alpha, the uh, this is equal to v tilde. OK, that's a minus there. Make that clear. I claim that this is going to be 0. And that's what we want. If we, if we want this to be a conservative vector field, certainly uh, it's a necessary condition that these closed curve integrals are all 0. And as I was saying in the previous video, turns out you can prove that's a sufficient condition as well. OK, how do I prove that? It's, just, it's really just a calculation. Um, I'm going to use the differential form version for practice with that. A, um, let's call it alpha. Okay, that's the integral over 
the unit circle of f tilde of uh, yeah f tilde minus a times the integral of the unit circle of alpha. Hey, this by definition this was a. This was a, a again times one, and that's zero. So the key is that f tilde had some circulation around the origin, which proved which was the caught. It was caught red-handed. It was the witness that, to the fact that it was uh, not conservative. But I know how to create a uh, a vector field or equivalently a one form that has exactly the same amount of circulation. And if I just ca cancel them out, then that circulation is going to be zero. Okay, so that's the integral over the unit circle, but then that tells me the integral over anything else is going to be zero. Because remember the argument, if I take the integral over any other curve, closed curve encircling the origin, I can, always, I can definitely apply Stokes' theorem on this guy, because this is definitely a closed one form. This was closed, this was closed, that wasn't the issue here. The issue was whether it was exact, whether it was d of something. So I can apply Stokes still to relate the integral on C1, which is now zero, to the integral on any closed curve, which encircles the origin. Or if the closed curve didn't encircle the origin in the first place, then I can just use Stokes' theorem straight up. I don't have to worry about the fact that I, I'm missing the origin. Or if you want to be really paranoid, what if the circle curve went around twice? Well, then just uh, slice it up into this curve, which goes around once, which we've just shown has zero circulation, and this curve, which goes around once, which has zero circulation. So no matter what curve we have, this integral is going to be zero. Okay, so now we just have to quote this theorem, which admittedly is not one of the ones I've proved in these videos, that says that since um, the integral over any closed curve of f tilde minus a alpha equals zero, then f tilde minus a alpha is d of a function. So why is that so interesting? Remember, the goal here was to go from an implicit characterization. This is, all I know about this vector field is that it was, or this one form, is that it was closed. Or equivalently, it came from a, a scalar curl-free vector field. And I want to know, can I create all such things in a standardized way? Well, it used to be, on R2, it was very simple. Just take any function you possibly could imagine, as long as it's nice and differentiable on all of R2, and just take d of it, an explicit construction calculation, and there you go. And you're never going to get anything more interesting than that. Well, here, you do get something more interesting. You have to pick a number, a single number, that tells you the circulation around the origin, or, you know, around the you know, circle or any, any closed curve encircling the origin. Multiply that by this vortex one form, which was the, the one form version of the vortex vector field, and then add in d of whatever function you want. So here's an interesting perspective. Okay. Um, you might want to read it on the left here. I'm going to just summarize it. The perspective is that this is going to get old really quick. It's going to get very boring. We know that d squared equals 0. Hence, if I want to create something whose d is 0, then I just take whatever I want without any choice, or without any uh, restriction whatsoever, take d of it, and then that guy is going to be something whose d is equal to 0. So I'm going to stop worrying about this. I'm going to say, oh, yeah, uh, I forgot. Yeah, I can always add one of these. So what? It's like adding the arbitrary constant in integration almost. That it's, it's a necessary thing to remember, but it's not the most interesting part of the problem. This was the interesting part. We had to put in a certain multiple of the vortex vector field to get something that had a non-zero circulation around the origin. And what, but how many choices do we have? Just one number's worth. All you have to tell me is that one circulation number, and then I can tell you this is the interesting part. It's essentially a, a multiple of vortex vector field. Yeah, plus a conservative piece. Blah, blah, blah. We know conservative things are going to be automatic. Okay. So this is the upshot, is that the analog, this is a bit more complicated than what we had before. When we were counting like the pieces of a space by figuring out how many numbers we need to define a function, like a, lo a locally constant function. Here, we only need one number to, to find the interesting part of the vector field, the circulating, the vortex part, and we're just ignoring the fact that, yeah, there's a lot of other freedom we have to play with, but it's not freedom, it's freedom we always have. It's freedom that, that comes for free, if you will, and, um, and so it's not very interesting. It's not new knowledge, okay? So, it's, what the interesting thing here is that I took one hole out of my space, and I needed one number, namely the circulation around that hole, to describe... Um, this this one form or equivalently 
a scalar curl-free vector field. And we're going to continue with that. Actually, let's, let's go ahead. This one video won't get too long if I just continue with at least number four here. Because that's where we start to see some of the generality here. M5, I don't need to write it down, it's right over here, are 2 minus 2 points. And I just happened to take out these two points. It doesn't matter which two points you take out. I just wanted to be explicit. Okay. So I claim that we can create a double vortex vector field, VAB, whose circulation around this point is equal to A, and a circulation around this point is equal to B. And the claim is that that's going to be sort of the only interesting example again. Okay. Well, all we have to do is take the Let's take the 1 over 2 pi factor on the whole thing. And we're just going to take um, the vortex vector field, and we're going to shift it. So this is going to be x plus 1 squared plus y squared. And then here is going to be an x minus 1 squared plus y squared. I'm just replacing every x with either x plus 1 or x minus 1. Here is going to be minus y i plus the quantity x plus 1j and minus y i plus the quantity x minus 1j. I'm just shifting the vortex vector field. So I've got a, a, a linear combination of part that's over here and part that's over here. Maybe this is going backwards. Who knows? Oh, and I need an a here and a b here. Oh, as usual, I should have told you before I gave that away. I should have told you to try and come up with it yourself. <coughs> OK. Um, not too hard to, to prove that this is going to have the right properties. For example, if I look at the circulation around this guy, this piece, I can apply um, Green's theorem or you know the generalized Stokes theorem or whatever to it because I can fill this in, and I can fill this in in a way that doesn't make this singular. This guy is actually nice and well defined, even if I include minus one zero over here. So this guy can't contribute to the circulation around this guy, and a, a circle right around this point, I just shift everything. That's going to be this is really just the vortex vector field if I shift it back to the origin multiplied by a. So it's going to have circulation A there. Then similarly over here, this piece, this circulation, that doesn't encircle the singularity of this, this thing. And so Green's theorem applies. And it's just going to get, going to get B because this is exactly designed so that a circle centered at B is going to have circulation equal to 1. OK, so there's our explicit vector field. Now if I want to make it, um, let's just use the tilde. If I want to make it a one form, I just change dx and dy dx and dy. Remember, vector fields in one forms, the tilde operation is really very straightforward. And there's not much interest to, to the translation. The forms really proved their metal when um, we went up to higher dimensions. OK, which we will. OK, so now, what if f is something so it's the scalar curl? f, remember that's dq dx minus dp dy. Many, many books just write that as pretend it's a three-dimensional vector field, take the curl and dot with k. I think that's a unnecessarily complicated. Um, that that's equal to 0. Or, of course, we could turn it into a one form and write it in a very simple way that it's a closed one form. Suppose you have one of those gadgets on this space. So it's allowed to get wacky and have nasty stuff going around around two points. The claim is that it's still the sum of one of these guys plus a conservative vector field. That's The proof is very similar to before. You probably want to stop and pause and see if you can do it yourself. All we have to show is that if C is a closed curve, that F tilde minus, I'm going to use the differential form notation, is that is that equal to 0? Well, absolutely. Because, uh, oh, wait. So I have to choose A and B. That's the tricky part. OK, so I'm going to let A be the circulation of a circle around minus 1, 0, and B be a circle around 1, 0 of F. And then, given those choices of A and B, I'm going to create the vortex vector field with that A and B. So that's going to be kind of a pretend version of F. It emulates F at least to the extent of having the exact same circulations around A and B. So if I have any curve, if it goes, a, goes once around A,
then it's going to pick up this a as the integral of f tilde, but it's going to have a as the integral of this guy. It's going to kill. It's going to die. If it's a if it's a curve that goes around here, that's going to have a b by definition of b as the integral of this part. But then it's going to have the same circulation around uh, this point from the v tilde, so the total circulation is going to be zero. If it encircles both, this is going to be a plus b. That's going to be a plus b. If it encircles them both twice, or encircles this twice and then this once, then it's going to have the same circulation. So no matter what, because this guy has is built out of the circulation numbers for this one form f tilde, when I take any closed curve, these circulations are going to be zero. And then we just have to apply this, uh, this fairly big theorem that says that that means that it's the difference here is a conservative vector field. So f tilde minus v a b tilde is, or in other words, in the one-form language, it's df. So we've shown that there's two numbers you need to know about a, vector, about a, a closed one-form on this space, the plane minus two points. And once I know those two numbers, I can create f tilde as long as you allow me to add an arbitrary exact one form, essentially a conservative vector field, to the mix. So again, it's saying this is the only really interesting example. There's a two parameter family, two numbers to pick, of interesting examples of closed one forms on this space, as long as you allow me to then add any exact one form that I like. Um, if you know anything about, uh, if you know a little bit of abstract algebra, I'm looking at closed one forms modulo exact one forms. And if you don't know what modulo is and you've never heard of abstract algebra, don't worry about it.